The Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Pokedex is getting messy because there's Pokemon that are officially confirmed, there's leaked Pokemon that are in the game, there's also hints and teases for Pokemon that might be in the game, and then there's also information from the leaks just saying no. This Pokemon is not observed to be in the game, and the weird thing is, it's changing pretty rapidly. So the Kanto starters have gone from maybe, they've been hinted to be in the game as of September 4th yesterday, but a week ago, we just didn't have any information. So that's also the white classification, is that we don't have any information, official, leak, or otherwise, about that Pokemon's fate in the decks, and it's making things crazy, so... We also have a website now. A few days ago, I just kind of talked about the officially confirmed Pokemon. Now we have all, like, the leaks stuff being added in. The problem is, it's hard to kind of sort between Kaka's real leaks and Ku's just fraudulent nonsense and teases and stuff. So, that's a thing. Also, just because it's a no for now, doesn't mean it will be a no on release. And that's also why, like, these maybe and teases could be getting weird. Because when it came to Pokemon Sun and Moon, the island scan hid national decks Pokemon in the game that were not visible in the Alola decks. It also meant that they were not usable in VGC because the VGC rules were for the Alola deck specifically. It also meant there were Pokemon added into the game that did not get an updated Pokedex entry. So a lot of weird stuff. And the thing is when it comes to like Kako's confirmed leaks, we don't know how they're getting the game information but they have like actual gameplay so there's some kind of tester also translators do leak information which means if you've seen the pokedex and you just kind of like go through that and say these pokemon are in these pokemon are not in well if there is like some kind of extra gameplay feature that takes extra time to explore and you can't data mine it then also that makes it weirder for knowing all the pokemon in the game but i want to talk about what we have so far because kind of is an interesting breakdown so the kanto starters being a maybe uh, kind of shows that, plus any other starter weirdness could have, like, extra gameplay features around it. I don't really care about starter Pokemon too much, even though Typhlosion is my favorite non-legendary Pokemon, with Lugia being my favorite legendary Pokemon in general. I'm not like, oh man, every starter needs to be in every Pokemon game. That's generally my whole take on this. Like, Dexit? Freaking stupid. Only idiots, NPCs jumped in on that bandwagon because now we're getting over a thousand Pokemon each with like different forms and stuff to update. You can't, like, it's it's not necessary to have it all in a game. And for the most part, that also ruins competitive. Working with a restricted dex tends to have a lot more fun behind it. And then there's also Pokemon Home and future games inside of generations, inside of consoles. So every Pokemon will be playable in its own way. Now, I don't, I don't see what the complaint is about. So yeah, like as for this, like, ah, Kanto starters, it'd be cool if they got worked in. As for the competitive, uh, Charizard without like a Mega or a Dynamax or a Gigantamax gimmick, not really that crazy of a Pokemon. Blastoise is a solid tank, and I'm also trying to think about this with Terrastalizing, but Venusaur is the problematic Pokemon, because like, when a Venusaur faces off against an Amoongus or a Ferrothorn, the game gets like Giga Infinity stalled at that point, so we'll kind of see how Terrastalizing maybe breaks that up. The Beedrill Evolutionary line, I'm just going to take it as, okay, these guys are not in the game. But without Megas, Beedrill not really that playable. Butterfree, we don't know about Butterfree, but Venomoth is already confirmed off of official information. So that makes the Quiver Dancing kind of weird. This video could be a while. Now that I'm like, okay, so we're four minutes in and we are at 23 of 1,000. Let's go. Uh, Pikachu, Raichu, mascots are in. Um, Arbuck would be an interesting Pokemon to have the Shed Tail, potentially. Or maybe it's just like an exclusive move for Cyclozar. Ninetales, bringing Drought, also opens up a lot of crazy strategy potential, especially with the Terrastalizing. Set Drought, go into a Pokemon, change, it, change its type to Fire. Oh. That's gonna be pretty crazy. I proposed a question in my last video saying with like Jigglypuff and Wigglytuff being confirmed, what does that mean for Clefairy Clefable? Because like, are these Moonstone Pokemon always in the same games together? I don't know. Uh, Nidoran, Nidoqueen. Yeah, I guess since I already talked about confirmed Pokemon, we don't have to go too much in on it. But that question wasn't really answered by anyone, so the niche Pokemon lore, I don't know how that goes through. Uh, Nidoqueen, Nidoking. Them being in is just kind of it. Also, yeah, like... It's hard to take in, like, the entire decks and be like, well, if X Pokemon isn't in, but Nidoqueen and Nidoking maybe are in, then they get viable usage. 
Sheer Force is just strong. And it gets like a rainbow assortment of co coverage, so I don't know. Maybe it is the typing that's holding these Pokemon back a little bit. Venomoth. Dugtrio being in, that's going to be spicy, but really Dugtrio doesn't want to Terrastalize. It just wants to get in, Arena Trap, Focus Sash, but then two-shot you on Earthquake and then go 1.5 for one, or just try to go like one for one with 30% chance. It goes two for one because of Fissure. Or not 30% chance. Yeah, 30% chance. So one in three. And then a one in nine chance, it goes three for one because of Fissure. So it's, it's good speed control, though. Nice little Pokemon to splash in. Uh, Primeape is leaked. Actually, so yeah, these guys are in. It's not a maybe. According to leaks, these Pokemon are in. Also, there's like regional variants and R fakes and different primal forms but also not pokemon and stuff so when that gets officially revealed we can break that down with a bit more understanding um alakazam line not being in i did a video breaking down like terrestrialization damage and how that interacts with like one shots and two shots and stuff so fast alakazam on high damage not going double psychic and one shotting everything maybe healthy for the game Polyrath not being in, eh, just not a great Pokemon in general. Arcanine's pretty good for, like, competitive shenanigans, both singles and doubles. Everything else is here. Drowsy Hypno never really took off. I think we would need to see, like, Pokemon adjustments for, uh, yeah, just, like, adjustments. You know, Hypno getting some kind of stat readjustment, new ability, stuff like that to find viability. Weezing. A lot of people got confused when I when I did my video breaking down like potential strategy with terrestrializing. They're like, "Why did you get scared when we when wheezing?" And then you didn't elaborate any further. That's because wheezing would be broken. It's already a very proficient, annoying tank. P Pain split, will o' wisp, and sometimes it just kind of gets to the point where you can't break it down. But it has levitate naturally, so you terrestrialize it into electric. That's self-explanatory. Come on, people. I know, like, A-Drive and other content creators have been rotting the brains of kids in the Pokemon community and just dumbing everything down, but you you shouldn't need to be told why Levitate Electric Weezing is filthy and terrifying. Um, next up, we got Scyther, already confirmed in the game, and then that means we got Scizor with Bullet Punch, Technician, Double Steel is going to be crazy. Jinx not being in, fine. Don't know what that means for, like, Electabuzz, Magmar... Mr. Mime also removes uh, baby Pokemon from the setup. Starmie would be cool to have in. Starmie has a lot of coverage, a lot of gimmicks. It can, like, minimize recover. It has, like, a lot of cool stuff. So I don't know if there's, like, terrestrializing angles on it or if it's just, like, a nice coverage sweeper to round out your team with. And also any Pokemon can terrestrialize at any time. So you just have in a random type Starmie, even if you use it 1% of the time, it still adds into the strategy and the depth. Taurus being in... And then also having, like, regional or R-fake or something, so we'll, we'll figure out about that. Ditto, it just has to be in the game because of breeding and also just Ditto being a thing. It's as ubiquitous as Eevee. Porygon not in. Good, because I did a video breaking down, like, hey, if you have Porygon Z and then you terrestrialize into normal, um, try attack just destroys everything. And if the... T Terra Blast move is 90 base power. That's just better try attack. And then Porygon just destroys more everything. And then you're going to need it to where it's like, oh, you need like one Pokemon on your team that is a ghost or can ghost Terra, or else Porygon Z just one shots everything. Um, no, like, this is where it also gets weird on fossil Pokemon. Like, also, I wonder if there's even the possibility that, like, maybe some Pokemon get patched in on the decks because Game Freak knows leaking and data mining is so prevalent but probably not or depending on like finalized versions of the game but yeah fossils those are usually their own thing also it saves it for dlc so them not being in initially and then getting added in later kind of a common ish thing uh that's just generation one so i guess we scroll back up and we go through the other generations nine minutes in let's go nothing on the starters centric for it though tease Furret's got, like, some shenanigans that have, like, appeared every once in a while, like, Fan Fridays and Theory Crafting, and I'm wondering what Terra does for that. Would probably need, like, very significant stat buffs, though, because, like, the 90 speed, not really usable. Like, this is just a normal-type blank slate Pokemon with no stats. 
but it's cute. Everyone loves Furret. Um, Politoed, not in. That makes sense because that, that evolutionary line is out. Apom, man, I, I'm wondering, like, if some of the exclusions are because of competitive reasonings with Terra. Like, you just cannot have, under any circumstance, Shedinja being in the game. Also, Smeargle being in the game makes things really ugly because of sketch interactions, which also makes me think that the new Grafii Abomination isn't going to have sketch, even though it kind of would make sense. Also, it would have been cooler to have a regional variant Smeargle, and I think this, yeah, I wanted to do a video kind of showing this off, where it's like, this is awesome. You know, obligatory Grafii Smeargle fusion. Why not just make Paldean Smeargle instead of the Abomination I even wanted to give, like, things a bit benefit of the doubt. I'm like, oh, I didn't know there was any kind of, like, lemur, lemur species in Spain because, like, the forest or something. No, it's still just Madagascar only and, like, very specific things. So having an eye eye doesn't even make sense for the Spain region. Now, I know that wolves aren't native to Hawaii because of, like, the Lycanroc evolutionary line, but even then, like, this is 100% the play. The the design and existence of AI eye is just not, or Grafai eye is not defensible sketch shenanigans though so apom yeah like you go fake out last resort ambipom while normal ter n normal terrorized or terrestrialized gross that that's going to destroy everything no unknown it, every time you introduce unknown like you need your own area that also has the ability to cram in 30 pokemon interactions so that's that's kind of fair and then hidden power it's it's messy glygar oh man no gly score not sure how to feel about that, because I don't use Glasscore, and the Pokemon can be a pain to go up against competitively, but a lot of people love that and love using it, so, like, we're just going off the leaks, just being like, no, nowhere to be found, is not in the game. Probably decent for competitive, but could have opened up a lot of really wild stuff. Dunsparce, and potential Dunsparce, like, evolution and variant, that's, that's cool. Bringing back the boy and seeing how those strats go with Terrastalizing. Uh, Heracross, Teddy Ursa Ursa Ring, and Delibird. Heracross got its own scarf stuff going on. I don't think you want to, like, do anything else with the Terrastalizing, though. Because, like, Terrastalizing into fighting, I think there's better Pokemon to just, like, double synergize into. But you are just Scarf Close Combat Mox Moxie gimmick on the Heracross. Ursa Ring, underwhelming. Delibird, underwhelming. Actually, Delibird got got its time in a uh, Pokemon, like Sword and Shield. Smeargle, not in. Smoochum, not in. We kind of went over that. All right, Generation Two knocked out. We just did that in three minutes. We we're gonna be out of here in no time. Oh god, there's so many Pokemon. Uh, unknown, 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 unknown. We don't know what's going on. Masquerade. Um, again, like the plausibility on just Quiver Dancers has me interested and usually bogged down by some kind of like bug typing or extra weaknesses from the flying or not having good enough extra coverage and super effective hits. So anything that can then like set up Terra and then just have bonus damage and synergies. You can't tease this. Like that that's just not. Like there's no way. There, there's no way Game Freak is that cheeky unless there is like a hard coded interaction to where Shedinja is just not allowed to terrestrialize because of its uh, ability and we do see like hard ability interactions like oh you can't just skill swap it for free so maybe you also can't Terra and I think that's better I think it's better to make the restriction on the Pokemon instead of making it unable to exist entirely Mawile, Plusl, Minun, okay no Mega What's it gonna do? No, no, uh, Roselia, no Rose Raid. Pretty solid competitive Pokemon. Carvana, Sharpedo. Sharpedo would have been cool. Just a fast Pokemon that can do Terrastalizing. And Whale Lord not, not in. That depresses me because you all wanted to see it. You all wanted to see Steel, Terra, Heavy Slam, Whale Lord. Like, some of the thoughts is, oh, I get justified on my Heavy Slam, Whale Lord set. But no, I was always justified from the beginning. Because the thing is, only idiots think it's a bad move set. Heavy Slam does the same amount of damage as Waterfall. Waterfall, 80 base power. Stab, plus 40, 120. Heavy Slam on the heaviest Pokemon in the game, or, you know, one of them that pretty much hits everything for max damage, 120. So it doesn't matter if it's non-stab, and what this also means, like, because it's the same damage. And I've done a lot of damage theory on how sometimes there's not very effective hits, 
that do more damage than normal effective hits, and people just ignore that because they're stupid, and they just refuse to listen to my correct content. So when it comes to like Whale Lord, it's, it's the same idea, except Heavy Slam can't be immune by Water Absorb, therefore you do have some safety instead of Vaporeon switching in, and then your entire game is ruined. That was just the concept behind it, is that you don't just have an immune that gets rid of six turns of curse setup. Um, Zangus? Yeah, if Survivor's in, then Zangus has to be teased. And we've already seen the updated Survivor. That was the first trailer when everyone went, ooh, look at the scales. Fossil Pokemon. Oh, no Milotic. Dang, dude. Imagine the nastiness that an any type Milotic could have done. Oh, that would have been so cool. Absol. Uh, Tropius is in under the leaks. No, Absol, again, like kind of like the Pokemon that had a Mega that made it viable being in or not is one of those things that I'm more just eh, apathetic about. Uh, it's weird when it comes to the pseudo legendary Pokemon because like everyone wants all the pseudo legendaries in. Some are teased to be in, some are just like not in. Metagross, very potentially game breaking on the Terrastalize. And that's really kind of the only thing that matters with the Pokedex is this Pokemon is or isn't in. How does that impact? competitive and terrestrializing. That's like the weird thing. The story is 5%, 5 to 10% of any Pokemon game. So it's like, oh, well my favorite Pokemon that's been with me forever, even though Ho Pokemon Home isn't even available on launch. So it's not like, oh, I can't transfer my Pokemon that's level 100 anyways and then beat the story together with my best friend that I've had for a decade. No, that doesn't, that's not even an argument. That doesn't even make sense. But even then, like you transfer over like a level 5 to do some kind of gimmick run with, you can't do that at the start anyways. And that's a minority of a minority of a minority of players for 5% of the game's, con game's content. Yeah, the only thing the Pokedex matters for is competitive. Badoof B-Barrel. A simple Pokemon that can go any type. That's that's actually super spooky. Haha, <laughs> get memed. Uh, fossil Pokemon, no Ambipalm. Chatots not being in is silly. This is just kind of going off of teases because we don't know the state of all the uh, pseudo legendary Pokemon. Garchomp getting rid of 4x weakness is actually scary to me. Like, I've never respected Garchomp at any point. When, when the Smogon Crybabies banned it in Generation 4, I'm like, you idiots don't know how to play the game at all. And then the casualness just continued from there. People like picking it up, people like running it often, but in every single generation, I've never been threatened by the Garchomp's existence. Now I'm actually kind of scared, because if, if you don't have that ice out into it, and it can go to like a, a some kind of typing, or maybe it's still just going to be bad. Because like, okay, you go mono ground. All you have is the earthquake. You actually lose the bonus damage on the on the outrage, or the dragon claw, so you're not scary at all. Yeah, maybe Garchomp still sucks. Snover, Obama Snow. There we go. I kind of mentioned it with the Ninetales. That as long as like all the Pokemon that can change weather are in, then there's like some other ideas and some other options, and getting rid of Obama Snow's 4x weakness, probably a decent thing. What does it get away? Actually, yo, Obama Snow going electric. Devastating. Because it sets in the hail, which means Blizzard is 100% accurate. And if you go um electric, then you get access to Bolt Beam. And you get access to a very powerful Bolt Beam. So what if you're losing the uh, stab on Blizzard? That's still 110 base, and then you have Terra Blast for 90 stab, while Hail is doing its thing. Now you do take Hail damage, so you can't sash, but I think I think that actually has like some interesting ideas. And then you're still setting up for like an Ice type Pokemon to Blizzard, so you either have double Blizzard and doubles, your own setup for weather manipulation and singles, which is a thing, and then other craziness. Rhyperior. So the fun th fun idea is a solid rock Pokemon without a 4x weakness. That's very possible with a Pokemon like the Rhyperior, and Rhyperior is already a very powerful tank Pokemon. So two beasts are not in. Gallade was shown in a trailer. Arceus, no, but Giratina T. So yeah, the state of legendaries, pseudos, and fossils kind of becomes contentious on every generation. And that's just the thing. So, Kanto starters may be in, Generation 5 starters not in, Woobat, Swoobat, so once again, like, simple Pokemon. Game Freak just doesn't want to worry about that. Whimsicott, Prankster, Game Freak just doesn't want to worry about it. Also, something I forgot to mention in my Fan Fridays. Having a Dark Terra type to counter 
Prankster because Prankster just apparently needed more nerfs. Uh, fossil Pokemon. So not even like, oh, they're teching in some kind of fossil Pokemon you randomly find. Just seems like all the fossil Pokemon are out. Cool. Fungus Amoongus. In. Scary. Because, like now, I think everything's just modified Skarmbliss. Where you just make it to where you put in a ghost type Pokemon. Especially like Ghost Regenerator Amoongus or Ghost Regenerator Toxapex. Next to Blissey. Boom, you got Skarmbliss, and now you have less weaknesses, and now you have Giga Synergy, and now there's probably some other ways of opening that up. It's going to be ugly. Klinglang, I feel, is always a Pokemon that has been on the fringe, fringe, fringe of viability. That Shift Gear is very strong, and we also see Cyclozar using, using Shift Gear, so Shift Gear into Shed Tail. Who knows what's going to happen there? Like, Klingling never took off, and I don't know why, because it's not like it has a 4x weakness. It's not like its stats are bad. It's just that that setup, if you're going for setup, everything else was just kind of looked like looked at better in a weird way. And even then, like, it's not like, oh, Kling Kling, Kling was secretly a top 20 Pokemon the entire time. People tried using it, and it just had failings. Maybe the Mono Steel into Stab just didn't work out, and Steel gets resisted by enough. I don't know. Chandelure not being in is so disappointing because we all wanted to see a fire candle on the chandelure and hopefully this is Koo just lying and having no real information because how could Game Freak not allow that? Like that is, if you design terrestrializing in the way you do, you have to put in chandelure for the fire because it's funny. And we've seen Game Freak do funny things like that. Like Behem keeping TM51 even though they changed it from Ally Swap to Steel Wing, I think. So Behem just has Steel Wing for no reason. Or maybe that's an oversight because this is the most hated and forgotten Pokemon. Galvantula not being in. Disappointing. Good amount of stats, good amount of utility. Would have been fun to see it. Bisharp. I think Bisharp is toxic for the game when it comes to competitive. Just it, the way it just sits in on the Defiant. Any dark, high attacking Pokemon that can super utilize the sucker punch eh, gets 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 rough and then steel to just bully out fairies i don't like it i don't like it what's in the game volcarona also another dangerous pokemon to have in the game um it's got a good typing though so like unless you do just kind of keep it in there for water and then you can also have a terror blast like quiver dance into terror blast also kind of opening up options um yeah, you can maybe come up with some nasty stab combos as well. Haven't fully thought about it. So, like, what plus fire, you have to look this up on uh, Pokemon DB type coverage checker. It's like, what plus fire gives you the best coverage? So that way you can roost Quiver Dance, your fire, fiery dance, and then a Terra move. And if that Terra move synergizes into weaknesses, then that's even better. Actually, uh, weakness of rock generally becomes a downfall of this Pokemon, but... Stealth Rock sucks. Rock Slide, I wouldn't say it's overrated, but it's not like one of those things where you find a Pokemon that is able to immediately respond to a Quiver Dancing Volcarona with a threatening enough Rock Slide. So yeah, like, what what do you do with the Volcarona stats that actually makes it pretty crazy? This is going to be a very, very dangerous Pokemon, though, if you can just be like, oh, what's that? This move's coming my way? I don't think so. So yeah, water seems like a safe bet, but maybe there's something else I'm not considering because I haven't analyzed its weaknesses to the fullest extent. I honestly think it's going to come down to what ends up becoming a popular Terra type, because if everyone's going like Electric Levitate, then going water just to like kind of turn a weakness into a temporary resistance one time to then gain other weaknesses might not be the play, but... Because, like, that's the thing. I think using the defensive, jabated, like, Tyranitar going ghost to eat the con uh, close combat and one-shot the Gallade, I don't think that's going to be optimal Pokemon play. Because now you just have a vulnerable ghost-type Pokemon instead of something that might have been a little better just to have around. So, like, okay, now my Volcarona's water while well, I'm weak to electric and grass. And... I'm just doing that to get rid of the water weakness, and then I'm still neutral to flying and rock. So, depends on that. I'm like, what about dragon? But fire dragon, I don't think has good coverage. I don't know. So yeah, it's gonna. There's gonna take a lot of math, and that's per Pokemon. This doesn't make any sense. 
So saying Delphox isn't in, but then the other ones are maybe in? I Has there ever been a time they haven't introduced the full evolutionary line, except for Generation 1 Charizard because Leon? I don't think that sets precedent. And then DLC makes it awkward. I don't know, because it just doesn't seem like there's a reason to have it like this. Now, Del Fox getting in the way of potential Spurgatito becoming a magic cat. This is so silly. Uh, at least the benefit now is that generations get smaller over time. So we actually just have less to break down as we keep on going. No Meowstic. Again, the prankster, dude. Game Freak just doesn't want to risk Terra Prankster. Uh, to be fair, scary. But yeah, a Murkrow's in. But yeah, Murkrow not as devastating as like a Meowstic or a Whimsicott. Uh, where's my boy Klefki? I guess we just don't know anything about the state of Klefki. Oh no, th there we go. I was, for some reason, I was just I was just blind to that. Uh, so Klefki being in that makes me happy. That that's gonna be really cool. Uh, Fossil's getting memed on. Dragalge maybe. Adaptability is spooky, dude. Adaptability high special defense Pokemon is potentially very spooky. Gudra, pseudo legendary shenanigans. Noivern hard confirmed already. People theory crafting on that. Avalug, again, kind of creating like anything Scarm Bliss shenanigans. And Klefki is going to be cool on the Prankster. And I guess if you restrict it to only a couple of Prankster Pokemon, it makes it easier to predict instead of like. Oh, Klefki, Meowstic, and Whimsicott are all in, and that just opens up way too many Prankster options. Whereas if it's mostly just Klefki and Murkrow, easier to prepare prepare for. I want to say prep, but prepare for. Um, Crabominable. That abomination just should never exist. Ori Kareo. The dancer ability is hype. And apparently there's going to be like another dancer Pokemon that's been rumored. That's also pretty hype. No Shenotic, dude. Fine. Ooh, Salazzle being in is interesting. No Minior and Pukamuka. All the fun ones, dude. All the fun ones are out. And then Komo'o just getting the axe when it comes to pseudo legendary shenanigans. Delmize still up in the air. Ooh. Delmize, everyone's talking about Steelworker, but then it's the same thing for Galara and Meowstic. Togedemaru in, maybe. Mimic you. Oh, dude. Komala is going to be really fun. I don't think a lot of people like tried to go hard enough with like choice band Kamala shenanigans back in generation 7. Uh, Mimikyu, always just a very dominant Pokemon. Does it bait? Like, do you bait out something with the Terra? And I think, again, that's it. Like, there's a Pokemon you Terra 95, not 95, like 90% of the time, because that's like a crazy core gimmick strat that you think has no counterplay, except in like 0.1% of scenarios. But then for those 0.1% of percent of scenarios you have like your other five pokemon that terra like one to two percent of the time it's like does mimic you just kind of sit on a cheeky terra and then it, it, it just busts that out rarely to keep the sweep going or does it actually become a primary terra pokemon who even knows this guy's got some shenanigans uh this core of knights a baller dude core of knights just better Skarmory, so we're gonna see where that ends up going, but I'm I'm excited to see that, especially with the mirror armor going to kind of negate a lot of shenanigans out there. Yo, if this if Appleton makes it in, I I turned Appleton into one of the best tanks in the game. Besides, uh, I I really feel like my favoritism of Appleton kind of dropped off because Hippo, Hippo is just my best dude. <laughs> Not literally, but Hippo's like top three my best Pokemon that I've used and it just it just all everything reverts to Hippo but if Appleton gets rid of the bajillion weaknesses it has and then finds some extra kind of synergy okay that that's very powerful like Appleton goes fighting stab body press it set up sets up quicker psychic is a pretty obscure weakness fairy's kind of common but you already had that and Appleton gets to tank it, it doesn't care. Appleton can tank a super. It can tank multiple supers. It just doesn't like tanking a 4X or a Airstream. So no Air, Airstream. If this Pokemon's in, like, game's over. Game's over for everyone else. Actually, I'm going to update my notepad. Because I have a notepad of strategies I want to bust out. Appleton, best Pokemon. Okay. Uh, Grimmsnarl's in. 
Berserker at, on the T's because of Steel, tripling, quadrupling, septupling, Terra, craziness. Just run everything over and see what happens. Dragapult's in. Good. That's just free wins. One of the worst pseudo-legendary Pokemon, and people like using it even though it's trash. So we get away with that, and then we're in a pretty good spot. Uh, Galarian shenanigans. So we already... Or not Galarian. Hisuian shenanigans. So we already know that Hisuian Zoroark is in. What about others? That makes things weird. So Cleavor, Ursaluna, and none of these Pokemon got to be used competitively. Another weird thing. And Pokemon Sword and Shield never got updated. Huh. Well, that's where we're at right now. Um... Again, unless, until you can like, oh, actually you can zoom it out. Without zooming out and really thinking about it, it's hard to understand where, where the state of the game is going. But zoomed out, there's a thousand Pokemon in the game, so it's hard to see where the state of the game is going. I think there's a lot of interesting ideas. I think there's too many interesting ideas. And maybe that's going to be a strength of the game. Like, Terra having so much opportunity, I think makes it casually acceptable because, or not casually acceptable, casual friendly. It's where like anyone can come in, they can just take their favorite Pokemon, they turn it into an ideal type, they make some cheesy strat around it, and then they're competitive. Then they're strong. Then they then they actually have something to go up against. Or maybe they're just like tired of the meta and they just make their favorite Pokemon anti-meta Terra. So I think that theory crafting leaves like a million things that can't be prepped for. Like just because of team diff and RNG and losing at team select or losing because the one Terra on their team is something you have zero counters for and you just get rolled by it slowly because of win condition optimization. It just means that like everyone's chance of winning has gone down by like 15%. I'm not saying like 100% win to 85%. What I'm saying is like if your expected win ratio on your team is 80%, then that goes down by like to like 70 something percent. Actually, it'd be more than that. But numbers, math. Uh, so it, it kind of gets some inter interesting interactions right now. And I think that's actually going to be cool for the game. And it also is going to make make it to where like win condition it, like identifying win conditions and then preserving yours is going to be more like megas which also makes sense because terra kind of has like that mega power feel to it and i think it's going to make the game really interesting as for like looking at the decks and figuring out everything it's so disjointed because i already talked about pokemon that were confirmed officially but i didn't acknowledge those in those videos and then we still have like some maybes some yeses and some nos but not all of this is hard even, like, the confirmed leaks and the maybes and the no's, none of that is, like, confirmed. So, I don't know, but there's some fun ideas floating around, and I talked about some really cool stuff in the last video, so hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.